welcome to The View from the EBRD. My name is Stephanie Linhart, you're a editor at The Banker, and I'm here with Sir Suma Chakrabarti, president of the EBRD. Now, Mr Chakrabarti, the EBRD is celebrating 25 years this year. What would you say were the main achievements of the institution in these 25 years? Well, it's difficult always, of course, to distinguish the achievements of the institution from the achievements of the region that we serve. But in a snapshot, I would say it's been a region that has really been transformed with help from EBRD in terms of moving towards a more market-based economy. So private sector development has been the major thing that EBRD has been pushing for the last 25 years. Over 100 billion euros of investment, uh, 4,500 plus projects. Uh, so the projects have been very successful as well. But particularly if you pull them all together, then you can see the impact, the systemic impact with so many of our countries of operation now becoming much more free market economies, which is essentially what EBRD was set up to do. So that's a big impact. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot, a lot of ch has changed since 1991. Uh, you've added some countries of operation. You've, you've added other topics um, to, to invest in. Um, now, this year's theme of the annual meeting is influencing change the next 25 years. What would you say are the next 25 years, what, where are the, the main areas to do work? Well, I think we have to stay true to our business model and our mandate, which is all about the private sector, particularly private sector development. And we try and do that through two things. One is investment, of course, but the other is policy advice, policy reform. Mm -hmm. Both are very important uh, to get the systemic change. And I think three themes come through very strongly. We are living in a world, and our region is living, is living proof of that, of great volatility, great stresses. And it's really important, therefore, we build the resilience of institutions, particularly in our countries of operation. So resilience is going to be a very important part of that. It's also about including people who are excluded, if you like, from the economic marketplace, whether it's women, whether it's young people, or underdeveloped regions, trying to get them more involved in the economies that we serve. Secondly, it's about pushing integration, because integration has been a great great source of success for many of our countries of operation, whether it's integrating into the EU, but more, br more broadly into the global economy. So we're going to push business development uh, throughout uh, our countries of operation, we're trying to get new investors from all parts of the world, as well as Europe, into our countries of operation. We're going to push infrastructure and energy particularly, very important but for integration as well. The third thing is we've got to take that private sector development uh, approach, so successful into really tackling some issues that are globally challenging for our region as well, but globally. Climate change being the obvious example. And here I'm really proud of our green economy transition. We know we've committed now to investing 40% of our annual investments by 2020 in energy efficiency. We can do it uh, because we've shown we can do it for the last few years. We've been above 30%, but really got to push on that uh, sustainable energy front as well. Sustainable energy, a huge, huge new part. Um, are there any countries specifically that are very receptive to energy efficiency? Oh, nearly all our countries of operation are, and of course many of them, particularly in our traditional region in Eastern Europe, Central Eastern Europe, are highly energy intensive economies because that's uh, the nature of the former uh, planned economies. They were very energy intensive, energy wasteful, one might say. So there's a lot of work to do in our traditional region, but also in our new countries on both investment, but also helping to design policy frameworks that attract investors into this area. Take renewables. You know, the work we've done with Jordan, with Egypt recently, and trying to really improve their renewables framework so that they can attract investors uh, to invest in solar and wind has been fantastic. And that's what I want to see more of. Uh, so it's a marriage, ma marriage again of that investment and policy reform, policy advice that will attract more investment, I think, into the energy efficiency area. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned some new countries of operation there. Greece is also a new country of operation um, since last year. Now, um, you've, you've done some investments there in the banks. Um, what would you say is the situation now in Greece? So our shareholders, uh, very interestingly, I think, asked us to uh, operate in Greece uh, until the end of 2020, so it's on a temporary basis, Greece and Cyprus, in fact, to help them recover uh, from the crisis they've been through. And I think in, in Greece, uh, we are starting off with the banking system, because the banking system in any country is central to all parts of the economy. Uh, so we've taken equity stakes, as you, as you say, in four of the systemic banks, 
We are also going to back that up with uh, trade finance through those banks, but we're also going to do other things, not just the banking system. Because I think for Greece to really recover, we need those areas where Greece has comparative advantage, tourism, for example, obviously, but some other areas where you know Greece can act as an energy hub uh, for Southern Europe, uh, certainly. I think we need to invest in those areas too to back up the, what we've done in the banking system. So there'll be a, quite a wide variety of investments, I think, going forward in Greece. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.